In part two of the wetland management video series, we shared information on the various wetland habitat types that may occur on your easement and how they naturally transition due to plant succession. This video will focus on managing and maintaining moist soil wetlands in your shallow water impoundments. Moist soil impoundments represent the earliest wetland successional stage. Historically, they would have occurred after a major disruption in the canopy of a forested wetland or the draining of a deep open water area where little to no vegetation occurred. This resulted in four necessary conditions for annual moist soil vegetation to establish. Full sunlight, recent disturbance, wet to moist soil conditions, and the lack of competing vegetation, all occurring during the growing season. Moist soil wetlands produce abundant annual seeds and tubers consumed by waterfowl and many other wetland wildlife species. These plants also provide an important substrate for aquatic invertebrates which are a significant source of nutrients for waterfowl and other wildlife. Because of the high value of this habitat to many wildlife species, we now use developed infrastructure such as levees, earthen dams, or water control structures, along with a variety of management techniques to maintain this early successional stage well past the timeframe in which it would naturally occur. Water control structures are particularly important infrastructure tools with flashboard risers commonly used on WRE wetlands. Flashboard risers allow insertion or removal of boards to provide the incremental water control necessary to manage moist soil wetlands. What we have here is an example of a water control structure with a full round riser. The way this uh, structure is designed, the inlet for this structure may be up to 20 feet out in the impoundment. And the stop logs are on either side of the, the riser. There where the water is running over the top of your stop logs and into the outlet pipe and subsequently out of the impoundment. Proper planning and management are necessary for successful moist soil impoundments. Each year, habitat conditions must be assessed at the end of winter and regularly throughout the growing season. Monitoring helps determine when to initiate a drawdown, whether plant succession needs to be set back, how well moist soil plants are responding to a management action, and whether reflooding is needed to create desirable mudflat conditions. Drawdowns don't necessarily have to begin as soon as winter's over. Um, especially with these moist soil units, you're, you, in many cases you don't have to worry about getting water off of trees. If that's the case, you can hold water into the spring, even early summer. The prime growing season in the Mississippi Valley continues all the way through August, so you don't necessarily have to be in a hurry to get the water off and give those plants time to germinate. Drawdowns are one of the most critical considerations when developing a management plan for your moist soil wetlands it's important to understand why a drawdown may be needed and when to do it. The three timeframes to consider in determining when to draw down are early, the first 45 days of the growing season, mid, the second 45 days of the growing season, and late, the remainder of the growing season. So in an ideal year, as far as managing our wetlands, um, we would start pulling boards out of our water control structures Generally, generally in, in, in May, um, May going into June is when we're going to start. We're going to hold the water all the way, all the way through then. Um, and then we'll start pulling a board at a time and let the water come down and just, just, just keep an eye on it. And every week, every two weeks, whatever we think is, is right, pull another board, let a little bit more down, a little bit more down, a little bit more down, a slow drawdown uh, coming into the summer, so late July, mid-August, really all the way up to the 1st of September is when we would try to get in with a disc and, and, and manipulate the soil. And, and, and really, you just, you just want to break the soil and flip it over and bring new seeds up to the surface for next year is what you're, is what you're really trying to do. Uh, it's all a matter of giving them the, the food source that they're looking for in there. And ideally, that's the way it would work. The timing and rate of drawdowns will determine the resulting plant community and subsequent seed production. Managers should consider how the timing of a drawdown will impact both favorable and undesirable plants. Early drawdowns can produce high-quality moist soil plants, but often results in the germination and growth of woody vegetation. However, an early drawdown may be necessary if the existing vegetative cover begins to transition away from desired annual plants 
or is dominated by undesirable species. In these cases, active management is necessary, and a thoroughly dried impoundment early in the growing season will permit equipment access. So this is an instance where the, the boards have been pulled initially a few months back. This unit has dried out, probably dried out too much though. Establishing and maintaining soil moisture is going to be important to grow these moist soil plants. During mid-season, it's okay to put a couple boards back in to catch a little bit of rain and let it slowly evaporate. Maintain that soil moisture so that we get that favorable vegetative growth. Remembering two simple rules for drawdown timing and duration can be helpful in formulating a plan for managing your impoundments. Hold water as late as possible and draw down as slow as possible. Following these rules will maintain soil moisture further into the growing season and create desirable conditions across the impoundment to produce a diverse stand of vegetation that is beneficial to wildlife. Slow or partial drawdowns are critical to help offset loss of soil moisture. Slow drawdowns are accomplished by removing one board every 10 to 14 days. The remaining pool of water in the lower sections of the impoundment will wick moisture into the mudflats and help keep the soil moist. Among the sprinkle top that we have uh, that's dominant in this impoundment, here are some various other grasses that we, that we see germinating in here. It's early to be able to identify those, but as a general rule, grasses are, are going to be desirable in your wetland impoundment. Uh, there are a few exceptions to the rule, but the grasses are early successional species, which is, which is what we're managing for in, in wetland impoundments. You know, many times after we construct these wetland impoundments, we, we, we hear that they were good, you know, for the first three to five years and then waterfowl use starts to tail off after that. Well, they're, they're getting out of that desirable state. The vegetation is changing, going more towards a woody system. And if we walked away and stayed gone long enough, they're going to be a forest. And in most cases, um, waterfowl use is going to continue to go down unless we intervene and keep them in that early successional state. As impoundments are drawn down, it's important to evaluate how plants respond to the reduced water level and determine whether intervention is needed to manage undesirable plants. So we're here in another impoundment, which shows you a little bit of difference. Um, the soil moisture there behind me is, that was the last place where water has, has drawn off. And we're late into summer right now. And you see, that's where we're finding our beneficial species. A little further up where the water came off earlier, and we actually did do some mowing, it stayed dry, it stayed too dry. There's a lot of upland plants in there um, that, that, that really aren't gonna be of benefit. And this is where all the good stuff is. Uh, I'm looking at uh, wild millets right here, sprangle top. I've got some polygonum. Here's a little bit different example of what we see during our midsummer monitoring trips is we've drawn this unit down. However, the response, the vegetative response we got wasn't quite what we wanted to see. We see a lot of plume grass, uh, balloon vine, brunichia, uh, trumpet creeper, um, and some uh, beaked rush. We don't have to just take what we've got here. We can come in with the, with the bush hog, mow it down, add soil moisture again, put a few boards in, reestablish soil moisture, and then see what the next response will be later on in the growing season. When it comes to reflooding impoundments, timing can be critical to meet objectives such as attracting waterfowl during the September teal migration. The best approach to reflooding is to inundate gradually, allowing water to slowly achieve its desired depth across the impoundment. This provides shallow water habitat well into waterfowl migration seasons, typically late November and early December. If pumping water is not an option for reflooding, insert a portion of the boards on your water control structure as early as August continue preparing the impoundment for the season, and then gradually replace the remaining boards to capture rainfall. Timing of reflooding can also be valuable in providing optimal areas for shorebirds and waterfowl to feed, as well as habitat for invertebrates, which are an important source of food for many wetland bird species. Many of the topics covered in this video series are included in the Wetland Management for Waterfowl Handbook, developed by NRCS and partners to assist landowners with managing wetlands for the benefit of waterfowl. The handbook can be found at the web address shown. As you work to create successful moist soil impoundments, 
Remember, all sites are different. Time and experimentation are valuable in learning how an individual impoundment will respond to various treatments or different conditions. The worst approach is to simply do nothing. The key to these sites is management. We can't say it enough. you got to manage. Manage, manage, manage. If you manage these sites, you're going to be able to enjoy the whole easement. I, I tell people all the time, we have to diversify these easements. So the bottom line, management is key. Be sure to keep records of what works and what doesn't, so you don't repeat mistakes. It's fine to experiment with different management strategies. Not all of them will work, but that's okay. Be sure to join us for part four of this video series, where we will discuss managing semi-permanent and other types of wetlands. For more information or assistance with wetland reserve easements, or to obtain compatible use authorizations, contact your local USDA Service Center. Wetland Reserve Management videos were developed by NRCS and the Tri-State Conservation Partnership.